Do you get the sense that we have any leverage over the Taliban right now? And if so, yes. what is that leverage and is it usable? Yeah. Yes, we do, we do have real leverage. Uh, the, I think it's something like 75 percent of the uh, Afghan budget is actually money from outside, whether humanitarian efforts or not. That's a huge amount of money. I, I think it's estimated that about $9 billion of Afghans, uh, Afghani resources money in their treasury is now held um, outside of the country, which is a significant, significant portion of that money. And much of that is held by uh, U.S. banks. So we hold, in many ways, uh, the thing that's most important to uh, a, a government, which is resources, money, making sure that they can keep their citizenry safe uh, and, and content. And I think those are huge leverage points that we have and that we will use. Is there a point where we're going to have to recognize them and sort of deal with them the way we might deal with an un, a country we don't like their leadership with, but it's their leadership? That was part of the conversation today and has been part of the conversation over the past week is, you know, at what point do you need to make sure that you uh, recognize, no matter how much you don't respect a government, recognize a government. And the point, I think, of recognition is when they follow the rules of uh, civil governments and civil societies that are recognizable by the 140 or so countries that are out there recognizing governments at this time. I think something like 107 countries, they were saying in our briefing, were all behind this idea of making sure that we are thoughtful about how we recognize, if we recognize, whatever government evolves out of this chaos in Afghanistan right now. That's an awful lot of the world stage that is, is thinking about this issue of how we recognize and who we recognize uh, and when do we recognize their government.